Okay, we're ready. Good afternoon. We Good have afternoon, uh, the Wendell Illamine and James show. Mm -hmm. Our first guest will be Mr. Clinton Thomas. Thanks for having me. Good to be here for Mr. Thomas. We welcome, welcome you to our program today. Uh, th he's an ex-offender, life, uh, lifetime prisoner. Just came home from prison. Uh, how long have you been home, Mr. Clinton? Went home one year and five days. One year and five days. One year and five right. days so far. Right. How long did you do in prison? Um, I served, um, in the physical constraints of the prison, I served 25 years, 10 months, 7 days. Okay. Where, where did you do your time? Um, I began at Old Folsom, Level 4, then due to being, you know, incorrigible at the time, I was transferred and moved to New Folsom and kept repeating the negative behavior. Then I went to Pelican Bay and did my tour of duty at Pelican Bay and then Corcoran and then shoes and then back to Folsom 180s and you know and then I made level three and went to Soledad spent some time near then Jamestown I did the circuit man did the circuit you okay know, yeah. okay what it and and what 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 period of time did it take you to realize that you needed to do something different with your time oh um after my arrest on January 5th 1989 it took me an additional 16 years 16 years yeah I continued to um not pursue any form of personal change I just okay. went, you know, like the leaves go when they leave the tree. Whichever the wind blow that was exciting for me at the time, even while incarceration, that's where it's where I went. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the reason for this show, we want to show society that mm -hmm. lifers that's gone to prison for long periods of time mm -hmm. and uh, uh, did the time, we want to show society that we are not monsters. Good Where we, 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 we've gone into the system and mm -hmm. we... We did the metamorphosis, mm -hmm. so this is why we have the show. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you today, and, and I want you to explain to the society mm -hmm. what you did with your time while okay. you were incarcerated. Okay, um, to the best of my ability, um, like I say, for the first 16 years, I ran what they call as a muck. You know, I had no direction, and I was still continuing in my antisocial behavior and conduct and frame of thinking. So it was in 2006 or so. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a, a position in an in a, in a, in a, um, educational department where I was able to be in contact with some good people and and literally a few teachers called me on my conduct because I think they were aware of the fact that I was still participating in slipperiness but I was working in the educational environment so they would just put little gems in my ear from time to time and it was one that asked me a question in passing. I had a lot of respect for this guy because he used to take a lot of his time out and talk to me about life beyond prison, about what was going on out there. And he told me one day in passing, he said, um, Mr. Thomas, you know the difference between a lie and the truth? And I said, no, what's that real flipping as I was leaving? And he says, um, a lie has too many working parts and the truth stays the same. You know, he said, remember that man on your journey. You know, so I thought about that and I would apply it to different things, whether it be in a um, classification committee with a counselor, whether it would be in a 115 hearing, whether it would be in these different things, different avenues where I was going where I was trying to be pro-social. And it, it took me, the wake up call was in 2006. Mm -hmm. I spent a year in ad seg. I had time to study and participate in correspondence courses. And I did that for one entire year and I earned about six different um, self-help completions and that motivated me that lifted my esteem that made me feel accomplished and then after i exited the hole after one year i never looked back i just continued participating in everything that would be of benefit to me so 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 you would say coming out of the shoe term mm -hmm. caused you to do something different with your, your life in yes. prison yes. and and this is most of people that go into shoe they have a what they call a reality check a reality on check. what they're doing with their life while in prison mm -hmm. and to use their time wisely while in mm -hmm. prison. So after you came out of the hole, you did the, the metamorphosis of the change mm -hmm. and you started doing something different with your time. Absolutely. Okay, so you went to school? I went to, I, went to edu I got my education because I dropped out of school in the sixth grade. After the sixth grade, I never attended public school and I got my education. I received my high school equivalently degree. Um, I participated in some college, participated in vocational instructions, um, became a certified welder. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like some people go to prison, many people go to prison, touch some vocationally, become carpenters, welders, this. But I really get down in the welding field. You know, okay. it's like one of the things that I love. It's like a real acute science. But I turned it around and I just 
any opportunity that was made available to me, I wanted to participate in it and see what I would get out of it. Okay. And I was fortunate enough to meet my mentor, Mr. Mike Davila, who also works at um, Hellfight 360, the free hate, the hate Asbury Free Clinic, and immediately took a liking to his style because it was no nonsense in a program that I wanted to be a part of, which was a substance abuse program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I became a peer mentor. I became a peer educator. Um, he introduced me to, when I first met him and he seen us in these rough circles that we had in these groups, he told us that we had all of the street smarts in the world, but he was gonna introduce us to some professional sophistication. So I could be at work somewhere and get called and told to report to visit, and I'd get in there and told, be here in the morning at 7.30, and I'd be on a four-day seminar with like the likes of the um, University of um, um, San Diego, Center for Criminality Research, mm -hmm. Training and Application, mm -hmm. with addiction specialists. And I would be in these seminars with them, with staff, getting trained along, 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 the, along the same lines as um, correctional officials. Okay, okay. And after receiving these trainings and participating in just – a plethora of groups, I was told that now that you've been educated, you have a responsibility to give it back. Okay. We want to back up just a little bit, mm -hmm. going back into prison. You uh, you had to go in front of the Board of Prison Terms to be mm -hmm. found suitable for parole. Yeah. How many times did you go in front of the Board of Prison Terms? I went in front of the Board four times. Four times. I went in front of the Board and four times. And in front of the Board of Prison Terms, you had to convince them mm -hmm. that you were suitable to mm -hmm. be found suitable. Yes, yes. Um, that's a very strenuous process, as we know. Um, I had to begin living suitable mm -hmm. prior to going to the board in order what, to come what, home. What do you mean living suitable? Um, they consider you to be safe for release if you're deemed suitable for parole. Okay. And what I wanted to do was deem myself safe where I was at that moment, whether it was in front of the board or not. Okay. So I wanted to live my way and I wanted to live my life in a way that honored the fact that I had um, participated in the, extinct, in, in the murder of, of an innocent person. Right, okay. Um, so I wanted to live my life in a better way. So I wanted to live suitable okay. for myself in front of the eyes of my creator, first and foremost, and then go before the Board of Prison Terms and demonstrate this change. So what you had to do, you had to change your complete lifestyle yeah. of living yeah. and, 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 and convince the Board of Prison Terms that you had changed mm -hmm. from the person that you once were mm -hmm. to the person that you are now. Absolutely. And you convinced them to find you suitable for all. After how many years? Say again. After 25 years, 10 months, and seven days. Okay, and then they found you suitable for parole. Mm -hmm. Then you came home. Then I came to the okay. real world. Okay, you was released from, mm -hmm. from prison. On, uh, what date was I you was released? released November 12th, 2014. Okay, you was released to society, and you came to back to, to, to this society mm -hmm. from um, a society of no return. Yes. Okay, yes. and, and you came into the Walden House. Mm-hmm. Okay. I came into the Walden House. What, right what, was that, what was that experience like? Um, it was everything I hoped for. Mm -hmm. I had been dreaming of giving the opportunity to really come home and to participate in the transitional process. So for me, it was like a piece of cake. Okay. Everything that I wanted to just absorb everything, and I wanted to smell everything and taste everything and just be a part of the process. And I was familiar with the fact that this company had been around since 1969 helping and saving lives. Okay, okay. So you would you would you would recommend the Walden House for people coming home from prison? Absolutely, I would. Okay. Absolutely, I would. Now isn't isn't the Walden House a drug treatment program? It is a drug treatment program. However, it is a transitional program as well for long termers who are coming home. Even though you may not have an addiction or an acute addiction or be caught in, within the grips of use, abuse, uh, or what have you, in relationship to control substances and narcotics, the 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 treatment at Walden House currently focuses on harm reduction and CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, mm -hmm. DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy. These are the things that every returning citizen from prison needs anyway. Okay. And it wouldn't hurt anyone to have a crash course in it. Okay, good, good. That's, that, that's, that's good. People mm -hmm. need to know, know that. Yeah. Uh, coming on, were you given a parole agent? How was your parole agent? I was given a parole agent. Um, I was told to report to my parole office the next day. However, there's a tendency for them to panic for the long-termers. So I reported the next day, and they were like, where were you? You were supposed to be here yesterday. And I said, no, my paper said next day, and everybody said they were aware of it. So, yeah, I came to San Francisco. My parole officer was Martin Figueroa, um, who was very supportive, man. He's um, very shrewd and, sh and stern, but he's one of the most supportive guys I've ever met, mm -hmm. and um, he's been a tremendous help to me as well. Um, and I participated in every program that, Health Right 360 has had to offer okay. um, orientation um, all the way up through reentry. Okay. So, so my understanding is that you completed the 
a Walden House treatment program. Mm -hmm. You are now an yeah. employee for Health Right 360. Yes, yes. Uh, on the payroll. Yes. And you're doing an outstanding job, my understanding. Full time. Full time. Full okay. time. How does that feel, man? Oh, uh, it feels tremendous, man. That's one of the one of my life's accomplishments thus far, you know, okay. because uh, my work involved poisoning people prior to my going to prison. Right. You know, so I'm conscious of that now. And today, my work involves being a service. And at a pre-clinic, you know, you, it's a clientele that you attract, man. It, it, it's, it's a challenge for you, no matter how strong you are mentally. Right. So it's something that helps me with my humanity every day as well. Right. Exactly. exactly. We want to. We want to. We want to show society that we are, we're not throwaways. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been labeled as as being unfit, mm -hmm. misfits, or whatever. And we go into prison and we continue our criminal activities in prison, and that's mm -hmm. not the case at all. Mm -hmm. So this show is a show that we want to be able to to give society mm -hmm. information that they don't have to change yes. the way of thinking. Because if you go into prison with life with possibility. Mm -hmm. More than likely, uh, every one of those individuals are going to come home. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to come home the same way they went in. Yeah. So this is what this show. This show is about mm -hmm. for us lifers. I'm an ex-lifer myself. Mm -hmm. us, us, us lifers to come home and show society that we will make a difference. We can make a difference, mm -hmm. and our intentions for the future is to make a difference. Oh, absolutely. You know, so we commend you. Thank you, brother. As an ex-lifer, mm -hmm. being part of our community mm -hmm. of the Bay Area. Uh, we, you give us hope, you know. Mm -hmm. You give the life every life that comes down to the parole building to see the parole. They see you, mm -hmm. and when they see you, they, we, we got a we got a Kool Aid smile that comes on Absolutely. our face because we know that you're a ref reflection of us. Absolutely, you know. Right. And we commend you for that, my brother. Thank you. Robert. And you keep on doing what you're doing. Alhamdulillah. Well, we have uh, Mr. Mr. Thomas here today, and we, like I said, we commend him for the work that he's done. You know, he's continued to do it. He's he's an access an asset to our community, an asset to our, our, our uh, fellow ex-lifers that's come home from prison. And coming home from prison, we have an example, uh, Mr. Clinton here. And uh, he's like a, what they call a, a, a rose in, a, in, a, in the middle of a bunch of cactus. He's, 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 he's blooming, he's showing. And you keep continue doing your work, my brother. Thank you, brother. Yes. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't add real fast that there are at least a dozen more coming right behind me, brother, who are impactful and powerful, and they can't wait to get here. Yes. Good friends of mine. Yes. yes. Thanks. With that, we're going to uh, close for the day, and we're going to continue doing our work to try to show society that we aren't misfits. We're not mm -hmm. throwaways. We can make a difference in society. Thank you for viewing into the Wendell L. James show today. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.